We begin today the Gemara on Dav Zayin Amadalef, the top line of the Gemara. This uh, Gemara was still in the middle of the sugya of Yodos. When a person says a partial statement regarding a neder, so we learned from a Pasik, Nazir Lahazir, <coughs> that the neder takes effect even if you didn't complete this, the, the statement completely. Now the Gemara asked regarding different cases, could I apply this idea of Yah to other scenarios? The Gemara asked whether you could apply it regarding Kedushin. The Gemara also asks whether you can, could apply it by Peya, when a person is designating a section in his field for Peya, and he says an incomplete statement. The Gemara continues here and asks whether you could apply the concept of a Yad regarding other cases. Zok to Gemara, Yesh Yad L'Tzedakeh, or Ein Yad L'Tzedakeh. Regarding giving Tzedakeh, is there a concept of a Yad for Tzedakeh, or there's no concept of a Yad to Tzedakeh? Uh, the Gemara will soon explain what would be the source to apply the idea of a Yad for Tzedakeh, as we'll see. But before the Gemara explains the source of this question, the Gemara, like it did before, first clarifies exactly what is the case of a Yad by Tzedakeh. What language is the person using that's incomplete, and still we would say that his ob- when he obligated himself to give Tzedakeh, that what he said should take effect. Hey Chidomi, what are we speaking about over here? One second, let's see, let's see. Hey Chidomi, what are we speaking about over here? Ileime is the case over here that the person said, the Omar, the person says, Hodein Zuze Litzdoke, this Zuz that I have, I'm going to give to Tzdoke. And then he adds to that and says, Vehodein Nami, and another Zuz, I'm also going to give to Tzdoke. Says the Gemara, that's not an incomplete statement. Ahu tzedakeh atzmahi. This is, that's what tzedakeh is. Tzedakeh, you, you, it's very clear that when you said one, one dollar to tzedakeh and the other dollar should be for tzedakeh, he said nami. The word nami is very clear that the second one is like the first. Hello, the case that we have a question about is, Kogunda Omar, if a person says, Hadein, when a person says this should be for tzedakeh, Vulayama Nami. But he did not use the term Nami. He says this, this dollar f- should be for tzedakeh and this dollar. But he didn't say also. Didn't say the word Nami. What's the Allah over here? Should I say, my, Hadei Nami tzedakeh ka'ama? Did he mean to say that the second dollar should also be for tzedakeh? Because in other words, we're going to look at this incomplete statement and say, it's pretty clear this is what he meant. If a person says this dollar for tzedakah, and then he says, and this dollar, even if he didn't say also, that's the idea of a yad. You didn't complete your sentence, but it's clear that that's what he meant. So therefore it's going to be for tzedakah. And this would be a <clears throat> or, or we can say, my v'hadein, when he says the word v'hadein and he does not add the word nami, what he's saying is, that, and the other dollar, it's going to be for general use. I'm going to spend it for something else. Even though it doesn't make sense that that's what he meant. But if he didn't complete his statement, that's what we're going to say. We're going to say, listen, you didn't complete your, say, your, your sentence. So therefore, when you obligated yourself to give tzedakah, you, you're not going to be obligated to give the tzedakah if you did not spell out your sentence 100%. It's, it's, uh, that's, why we, that's why we don't read it. That's, no, that we, exactly, we don't read it. Okay. So he didn't finish his words. And therefore, if you don't finish your words, you're not obligated to give it to tzedakah. So you, you asked before the question, when a person says such a kind of a language, why should it be any different than a regular neder? So the answer is because over here we're talking about tzedakah, which is not to asser something. The pasuk that we learned out from before to say that there's a kayach of a yad, when you say incomplete statement, that it takes effect, that's for a iser. You learn it out from a nazir, just like by a nazir that's assering upon himself something. So a machmer becomes asser without completing the sentence. But over here, obligating yourself to give tzedakah is not in the same category at all. By a carbon, it becomes usser, it becomes hectic, it does become usser, right? Besides the fact that it's a carbon, a carbon means that it becomes usser. Okay, so the Gemara now here, it explains the source of the question. Kiv in the iskish le karbanis, should I say that because tzedake, we find in the Pasuk that it's compared to karbanis. There's a Pasuk that says, Beficha, and this is in a Pasuk where it speaks also about Karbanis. And it says the term Beficha, Zu, Tzedake, and Beficha means what you say with your mouth for Tzedake. Right, so the, the Pasuk actually where it says is that Iskish Le Karbanis actually is, is speaking about the Pasuk where it speaks about a neder. Not about look, the the Yahweh yeah, in the side of the Gemara. Moitzis Vasecha Tishmar, Vasisa Kashan Adarta, Lasham Lekecha, Nedova Shadibarta Beficha. So that's a Pasuk that speaks about a neder. 
but it also uses the term beficha, which means tzedakah. So therefore I compare, just like when a person makes a neder and he asks her something, like a carbon, in the same pasuk it says beficha, which refers to tzedakah. Rashi over here brings the pasuk, it says the pasuk in Yeshaya, kashi debarta beficha yotza mipi tzedakah. Yeah, so you pee tzedakah, you see that what you say with your mouth, the term beficha refers to tzedakah. So therefore yesh len yad. I should apply the Indian of yad, just like by a neder to tzedakah as well. Av tzedakah yesh lo yad. Oydil or maybe I could say, lebal ta'acher hu de iskish. This that we compare tzedakah to a neder is only regarding the halacha of bal ta'acher, which the Gemara spoke about before, not to delay your pledge for tzedakah. Similar to a carbon, where you should not delay your pledge for a carbon, so too you should not delay your pledge for Futsudaka. But only for that we compare it. We don't compare them for anything else, and therefore maybe there's no din of Yad for Tzedakah. Vaita the Gemara says we have another Shaila regarding Yad. In, in, in halacha, so if someone pledges money for Tzedakah, it's not a nether then. It doesn't have the same halacha like a regular nether. Maybe it is a nether, but a, not a nether of an Isser. And therefore that din of, a, of a Yad doesn't necessarily apply. Yes, yad la hefke. Now the question is regarding hefke. If a person declares something hefke, something to be ownerless, and he says it in a way that it's, a statement is incomplete, should I apply the concept of a yad by hefke? Or do me ain yad la hefke? Or maybe by by hefke there's no yad for hefke. So the Gemara says, Hainu tzedaka. When you make something hefke, isn't that the same like tzedaka? What happens when you make something hefker? So who takes it? Who gets it? A poor person gets it, right? Who's going to take something that you make hefker? So isn't it the same like tzedakah? So why are we asking the question over here? So the Gemara says, Im tim ka'omar. The question we're asking regarding hefker is actually based on the previous question, b'negeya to tzedakah. And it goes as follows. If you're going to say regarding tzedakah that we do apply the concept of a yad, so do I say the reason is the ain hekesh lamechza. The reason why we apply the concept of Yad regarding tzedakah is because we know that there's a hekish of tzedakah to a neder. And once we know there's a hekish, we can't make a half a hekish. The rule is usually whenever there's a hekish in the Torah between two things, the hekish is not half. Here, there's a gemara, there's a gemara here on the table. The hekish is not halfway. The hekish has to be a full hekish. That's usually the rule. But there's the, the only reason why the gemara, the Ran explains the gemara over here, the only reason why the gemara before <coughs> had a svara to say that the hekish of tzedakah to a neder is only a half a hekish. We only say maybe the hekish should be only for the halacha of bal ta'acher and not for the halacha of a yad as well. Is because when it says in the pasuk the hekish, it doesn't say clearly the word tzedakah in the Torah. If it would have clearly said in the Torah the word tzedakah together with neder, then it would be a hekish and we could not divide the hekish into half. It uses the term beficha. So Beficha is not Befeirish Tzedakah, it's just a drasha. So maybe we use the Hekish only halfway for one halacha of Baal Ta'achar and not for Yad. But now the Gemara says, if you're going to say by Tzedakah, even though it's not clear, but nevertheless, the Hekish is a complete Hekish, you can't divide the Hekish. So Hefker, so now the question becomes regarding Hefker. Mi Amrinan, Hainu Tzedakah. Do I say, as the Gemara just said before, Hefker is similar to Tzedakah. You, you declare something Hefker, so who takes it? Poor people. Or maybe Shani Tzedakah, maybe Tzedakah is a different thing. When you give Tzedakah, when you're dedicating something for Tzedakah, who's that for? That's, so that's clearly only for poor people. Avil Hefke, when you make something Hefke, even if it's true that usually poor people will take it, but Bein Laniyim, Bein Lashidim, you're not uh, dedicating money for a fund for Tzedakah. It could, anyone could take it. It could be poor people or rich people. So therefore, it's not, this, it's not similar to Tzedakah. So it's not part of the Hekish that it says regarding Tzedakah. So again, even though Hefker, what you see from our Gemara is that when a person makes something Hefker, Hefker is a kind of a neder. There's a discussion in Rishayim about this. This Gemara is pretty clear that it's saying that Hefker is a type of neder. But nevertheless, maybe this type of neder is not compared to the neder of an Iser, where the title was Marba, this idea of a Yad, that even an incomplete statement will also take effect. Here comes the final question regarding the idea of a Yad. By Ravina, Ravina asked the question, Yesh Yad le Beis HaKisei Oiloi. What's the Allah of a Beis HaKisei? This, this is a sugi we, want, we learned a long time ago in the Gemara in Brachis, when a person designates an area to be used as a bathroom. So even if it wasn't used yet, and even if there's no nothing over there that's unclean in the place, the very fact that you designated it for a bathroom, you're not allowed to speak the Torah there, and it has the halach of a bathroom just by designation alone. Now the question is, when a person verbally is designating this place as a bathroom, and the way you designated it, you use the incomplete term, 
will that designation take effect or not? So is there the concept of a yad, just to, to clarify, the, the, I think it's the Taisvis here that says that this idea of, till here, when the Gemara was talking about yad, whether this yad by Nedarim, Kedushin, Nizidis, Peyot, Stok, Hefker, all these cases, the idea of yad is actually minatayre. The Gemara wants to know whether you could apply this idea of yad that it has a power, menatayre. Over here, regarding this halacha of Beis HaKisei, this whole thing is midrabonon. It's a chumre midrabonon that you're not allowed to say divrei tayre in an area that was designated for a bathroom. Menatayre, only an area where there's actual shmutz there, actual dirt there, you learn out from the Pasuk, v'hoya machanecha kodosh, that you're not allowed to say divrei tayre in such a place. But an area that was just designated to be used as a bathroom, and it's totally clean, over there, menatayre, you're allowed to say divrei tayre. It's just a chumre midrabonon. So when the Gemara asks over here this question about a yad, regarding designating a place for a bathroom, it's just a chumrim mid Rabbanon. It's not similar to the questions we asked before. So again, the Gemara clarifies what exactly did the person say. Heichi Domi, what is it? What did he say? If the person said, this room should be a bathroom, and then he said, nami, and the second room should also be, so he used the term nami. So nami have it. So that's clear that he's saying that the, he said the word nami, so the other one should also be designated as a bathroom. Ella, the case is, he said this room should be a bathroom. Then he says, and this, he didn't say the word nami. So my, here the question is, what's the Hadein the Omar, when he says the word Hadein, it mean, he meant to say, nami he means to say this should also be a bathroom. If you're going to apply the concept of a Yad, then even an incomplete statement, it's clear that this is what he meant. So we know that he meant that it should also be a bathroom. If you, don't, if you just look literally at what he said and you're not going to complete the sentence for him, so then what does Vadeim mean? <coughs> Maybe he just meant that this other place will just be used for other general use in the home, not a bathroom. Says the Gemara, this was the question of Ravine. Now, Miklal, from this I can understand, the Pshitele le Ravine, that it's obvious for Ravine, the Yesh Zimon le Beisakisei that by a bathroom, just designating this area to be a bathroom, it already gives this area a halacha of a bathroom. That's what I see. I mean, Ravina is not even having a doubt about that. To him, it's posh. That just verbally, you can designate an area as a bathroom. His only question is, if you use an incomplete statement. But that's not so simple. Ravina actually had a question about this. His mean, an area that you verbally designated for a bathroom. What's going to be the halacha? Is it going to have the halacha of a, of a bathroom just by designation verbally alone or not? And the same thing is mean, it's an area that you designated verbally. To be a Beis to be a bathhouse, mahu, what's going to be the halacha? Zimun moyol, I ain't zimun moyol. Just by designating it, does that have an effect or does it not have an effect? Somebody shine him actually take out the words Beis HaMerchetz, because if you look in the Gemara and Brachis, over there it actually says that regarding a bathroom, when you just verbally designate it, it does take effect, because a bathroom is more of a dirty area. But uh, I mean, I'm using the term bathroom, but it means like a, a, a place where a person, uh, a ba- <laughs> not, not, not a bathhouse, no. I'm talking about a bathroom, a Beis HaKise, a toilet room, right, or whatever. And, and uh, a Beis HaMerchetz is a bathhouse. Over there the Gemara's Maskan is because, because a bathhouse is not as dirty as a bathroom room, so therefore, over there, just by designation, it will not become Osir to say Divrei there. So some Rishayim take out the words Beis HaMerchitz here. Okay, so the the point is we see that Ravine doesn't even necessarily hold of this idea that just by designation alone it becomes Osir to say Divrei there. Answers the Gemara, Ravine chode migoi chode kamibayale. Ravine has a question within a question, one question within another question. He had like a one question de- designating the area, does that take effect or not? And then if you're going to say that just designating it takes effect, now he had a second question. Is there yad or, the, or is there no yad? Even an incomplete uh, statement, will that take effect or not? He had two questions. What does the Gemara conclude over here? So this remains a question. This is another place where some of the Rishayim say over here that usually in the Shas, what does it say when it doesn't have an answer? The Gemara says, Teiko. Here it says, Tiboyele. So again, the Rishayim say, here you see the Lashon of Mesech Ten Adarim is Mishunah. It's, di- it's different than the rest of Shas. So it's, it's a little bit like Yerushalmi or it's, it's, it's different. The Rishayim over here discussed regarding all these questions. The Gemara here had asked a bunch of questions and it never gave an answer. So basically, the Ran over here brings from the Rishayim that regarding all these questions were Machmer. 
when it comes to Kedushin, Peyet, Stokke, all these things where it's questions Menatayre. And it's, it's relevant, maybe, maybe the Kedushin took effect, maybe the obligation of the Tzedakah took effect. So because the Gemara doesn't resolve it, so it's a suffix regarding a subject Menatayre, and therefore in all those pl- cases we're going to have to be Machmer. Going back to the Mishnah, the Mishnah said, Menude ani lacha v'chulu, when a person uses the term that I am menude from you. What does the word men- menude mean? So we'll see soon in the Gemara, but for now let's uh, translate the word menude as ostracized. The person says to his friend, I am ostracized from you. What, is, what does that term menude do? So the Gemara said, the Tanakhama says, it, it will not make you osa on your friend. The term menude is not clear enough to be the that you're also from your friend. But Rabbi Kiva in the Mishnah it said, Rabbi Kiva, the Lashon of the Mishnah was, Rabbi Kiva haya choichech lahachma. Is that the little term? Rabbi Kiva haya choichech bezeh lahachma. Which means he had a doubt, he was choichech, one of the pirushim of choichech means he was sort of scratching himself, he was not sure, and he was machmer about this, to say that menude does mean that you're also. Um, Rabbi, so Abaye said, said huh? that's Kavana. Right? But the Kavana, it's not a, a Kavana is not enough. It has to Why also be in his, in his, with his mouth. That though, does it mean Mamish and Isser? <coughs> so Abaye said, Moi de Rabbi Kiva le Inyam Malkus. Even though it says Rabbi Kiva was Machmer, but Rabbi Kiva would agree regarding Malkus that if he goes and has a no and he and he uh, doesn't do what his nether is, but regarding Malkus, she ain't like it that he will not get Malkus because the imkain if Rabbi Kiva would hold it, you even get Malkus for this. Nisni Rabbi Kiva Machmer. The, the, the Mishnah should use the term Rabbi Kiva is Machmer that he's stringent. Why does he use the term Rabbi Kiva was Choichech Bezel Achmer? Choichech means that he was doubtful about this, and therefore even though a Machmer, but there's no Malkus. Omer Rav Papis. And Rav Papis explains the Machlekes of the Tanakhama and Rabbi Kiva the Mishnah. He explains it as follows. Benadina Minach. If a person uses the term Nadina Minach, the word Nadina means, Rashi says, Menude, or like the term Nida, which means I'm going to be distanced from you. The Kula Amalep Nobody argues that this is a term that means that I'm going to be Asr from you. Mishamtana Minach. If a person uses the term Mishamtana, which means excommunicated from you. The Kula al Mashari. Everybody agrees that you'll be allowed. Ex- the term excommunication is not something that's close enough to the idea of Isser, and therefore everybody agrees that it's going to be Mutter. But my pligi, when is the argument? The term of Minude. Minuda Niloch. So this term Minude could be translated in two ways. The Rabbi Kiva's uh, opinion is Lishne Dinidu Yehu. That this term Minude is an expression that means that I'm going to be distanced from you. It means, so you can touch like I touched in the beginning, that Manuda means ostracized, or it, it does mean there's going to be, uh, they touch it excommunicated, but over here he's actually saying that Manuda means a Lashon of Nidui, which means distanced and ostracized from you. And therefore, Rabbi Kiva says, you will be Yasser. But Rabbanan Savri, Lishna de Misham Tanahu. Rabbanan say the term Manuda means excommunicated. And excommunicated does not mean it, sir. And therefore, you will not be us, sir. That's the Machlaikis. So, mm-hmm. it's, it's a suffix how you touch the word menude. Says the Gemara, this is Rav Papis Pshat. It's but Rav, that the Dina and the Duna have the same... Uh, root, the same source? Yeah. Could be. Two opposites. But, but it doesn't mean the same thing, yeah. So, the Gemara, Pliga, the Rav Chiste, this Pshat of Rav Papis argues on Rav Chiste's Pshat, because the Ahu Gavre, because there was a person, the Omar, Mishamtane Benichsei, the bread of Yirmiya Baraba. Person said he used the expression of Mishamtana, that I should be excommunicated from the properties of the son of Rabbi Yirmiya Baraba. Also, like Hamed Rav Chiste. So he came to Rav Chiste to ask him whether this term Mishamtana, whether the, it takes effect, whether there's a nether here. Amalei, Rav Chiste answered him, Les the chosh lo lahad Rabbi Kiva. There's nobody that is concerned of the opinion of Rabbi Kiva. So Rabbi Kiva would say that in such a case you should be Aser, but because we don't pass him like Rabbi Kiva, so therefore it's not a nether. What do we see from this? So we see that he held that according to, to Rav Chizde, when Rav Kiva says the term Menude is Aser, Menude does mean excommunicated, it does mean Misham Tana. And nevertheless, according to Rav Kiva, the term excommunicated will be a term of Iser. You be Mahmed that it's Iser. And therefore he was telling him that we don't pass him like Rav Kiva. Because the Gemara brought up this expression of excommunicated, the Gemara here continues and says, Om Rab Ila Amar Rav. Rab Ila said in the name of Rav, Nido Bufanov, Ein Matirin Loi. When you place a person into Chayrem, into excommunication, and you did it in front of him, 
So then, when you are going to be matter this this cheirem, it has to be done also elo befanov. It has to be done in front of him. Nido shaloi befanov. If you place a person into a nidu, into a cheirem, but it's done not in front of him, matirin loy bein befanov bein shaloi befanov. So when you matter this cheirem, you could be matter it whether in his presence, whether not in his presence. There are various. Uh, Explanations in the Rishainim here, what the reason for this is. The, the Pirish of Duran is that if you place a person in a Khairim in his presence, and then you're going to be matter it not in his presence, and all of a sudden he sees that people are acting with him, behaving with him normally, not with this Khairim, there'll be a Khashad. He's going to be suspicious, like what's going on? People are not keeping this Khairim, he's not going to realize what happened. He's going to be Khaisha that they're being over on this Khairim. So therefore you have to do it Bifanov. So you should know that they removed it. But if it was Shalai Bifanov, so then there's no Khashad. So he says, maybe I saw some people were acting with me like a cheyrem, and even though they placed me in cheyrem, not in my presence, probably now they took it off, also not in my presence. That's what the, the Ran says here. But there are other Rishayim that want to say, the Pshat, the Ran also quotes it here, that when you place a person in a nidui in his presence, the strength of this nidui is stronger. When it's in, the pre- in front of the person that has a stronger kayach, and therefore the only way to remove this stronger nidui, the stronger chayrem, is only when you do it in his presence. It's a second shot. A third shot, interesting, Taisus over here says, that has to do with the embarrassment. If you embarrass a person and place him in the chayrem right in front of him, so then you have to take off this chayrem also in his presence, sort of appeasing him. You, you, you did it in his presence, don't just remove it when he's not, when he's not here. You have to you him, so now appease him and take off this chayrim in his presence. In connection to this subject, Rav Chanan Amarav said that Shemei Askaras Hashem, person that hears the Abish's name being mentioned in vain, from your friend, you should put him, he, he, he belongs to be placed into a, into a chayrim. If you did not excommunicate him, so then, who the one that hears this and does not place his friend into this nidui, you yourself now deserve to be in the nidui. And the reason why a person that mentions Hashem's name in vain is so stringent is because anytime there's a place where the Abish's name is mentioned in vain, that's a place where poverty will be found. And Vanius Kemisa, a person that's poor, it's equivalent to death. Shenema, like we see in the Pasuk, it says regarding Dasan and Avidam, that the Ebesha tells Moshe Rabbein, you can go back to Mitzrayim, Kimesu Kola Anoshim. The people that were looking to kill you died. And what happened over there? They didn't die. They were still alive, but they lost their money. So they lost their influence with Parai. So therefore, you don't have to be concerned about this. The Rani Baruch speaks about the fact that really there's a, not only a person that's poor is considered like he passed away, but also a person that's a Mitzayra, a person that's blind, a Suma. And a person that has no children is also a person that, that, that like he has no life. And the, the Ram points out, but if you look in the Psukim, it's clear that Dasan and Avirim were not blind, they were not a Metzayda, and they had children as well. He brings the eyes from the Psukim. So therefore, it must be that what happened was that they lost their money. The Tanya, we also learned in Abraisa, Komokim Shenosnu Chachamim Meineyem. There's a term, this is an expression the Gemara uses a few times. When, when the Chachamim, they, they would look with a, with a sharp eye, they were makbe, they were particular. What does it mean when they look with a sharp eye? What happened? Oi Misa, oi Oini. What happened to that person is, either he passed away or he became poor. So we see from this as well that poor and dying is equivalent. It's interesting, the Gemara has to bring Abraisa after they brought a raya from the Befeir Shapasik. Fight the Gemara says, Omer Rababa, Rababa said, Have a keimne kameide Ravhone. I was standing in front of Ravhone, and what happened was, Shama lahach itse, the Afka haskara Hashem levatola. And then I heard, he heard that there was this woman that said the name of Hashem in vain, and what happened? Shemesa. Uh, so she passed away. Uh, sorry, no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. Shanta. Sorry about that. Shanta, he placed her into a cheyre. For, for doing this, as the Gemara just said, she deserves to be in Khairim. And then, Vishar Allah la Alter, Ba'apa. And then, but immediately, right afterwards, in her presence, he was matter, this Khairim that he placed her into. So now he said, I learned from this a few things. Shmami not class. I learned three things from here. Shmami not, the first thing I learned is, Hashem Askaras Hashem Epicha Veda. You hear a friend saying the Hashem's name in vain. Tzarech Lenadaisa. He should be placed into a Nidui. Shmami not, the second thing I learned is, Nido Bafanov, Ematiran Loy Elo Bafanov. If you place him into a Cherem in his presence, so you remove the Cherem also in his presence. And the third thing I learned was, Between placing him into the Cherem and then removing it, it doesn't have to be any time. You place him into the Cherem and that is the punishment and then immediately you could, you could annul it. 
Amrav Gidl Amarav, Tamad Chacham, Minad Delatzmaya. Tamad Chacham could place himself into a Khairim if he deserves it. And the Gemara Sum will give the example when he deserves it. Umayfir La Atzmai, and he could also annul his own Khairim that he placed upon himself. Says the Gemara Pshite, this is obvious that a Tamad Chacham has the power to do this. So the Gemara says, no, it's not so obvious. Mao de Taime, I would think to say, Ein Chavosh, Mataratzmai mi Beisa Surim. A prisoner cannot free himself from prison. So once you place yourself into, into a Chayrem, so you can't, you can't now free yourself. And someone else would have to undo this Chayrem upon yourself. Kamash Malon, that's why he says, he places himself into a Chayrem, he can remove it. Hey Chidami, now what's the case of this where Tamad Chacham has to put himself into a Chayrem? Like the following th- story that it says about Mazutra Chasida. Apparently, he was called Chasida because he was a Chasid, a very pious. When there was a student that was obligated to be placed into a Chayrem, what would he do? He would first place himself into a Chayrem. And Vahada Mishamet Barberav. And only after this would he place this student into a Chayrem. And then, when he came home to his family, he would undo his own chayrim because now that he came home, so he wants his family to be able to interact with him. So he would remember that he has to undo his own chayrim. And then he would go back to undo the chayrim that he placed this, this uh, yeshiva student, this, this, this Talmud and chayrim as well. So some say the reason why he would put himself into a chayrim before he would uh, put a student into chayrim is for this very reason, in order for him to remember that he, he should remember to undo the chayrim of this, of this uh, student. So therefore he first placed himself in chayrim and then he undid the chayrim. Now some Rishayim say that this idea that it says over here that a Tamil Chacham could place himself in the chayrim and take himself out of chayrim, it's only in such a kind of situation when he doesn't deserve to be in chayrim. He's only doing this as a reminder to remember to undo the chayrim of the person that he placed into chayrim. But in a case where he deserves to be in chayrim, he can't place himself in the chayrim, he can't take himself out of chayrim, that's a different story. It's only in this case. But others say that it's in every case, that it doesn't matter. You can't take that seriously after a while, right? No, no.